Are you looking to build new habits but find it hard to stay accountable? Well, the Excel Habit Tracker we're about to make is the perfect solution to help you stay on track. With the tracker on the left hand side, you can write all your habits. In the middle, you can track them with checkboxes on the days you complete them and you'll see the progress for each habit on the right hand side. Up top, you'll see a chart that has your daily habit completion count and it's also got some KPIs to the side to see what your best habit is, what your worst one is and much more. Many people I showed this to were amazed you could do this in Excel. So let me show you the four steps you need to create this from scratch. Let's get into it. In step one, we're going to work on the structure. For this, we have a blank Excel file, as you can see. Up top, we're going to have headers and some visuals. Let's say we start the habits at around row 13. So these are going to be our habit names and we can list them out one by one. For example, I could write daily exercise as the first one. And let me fast forward how I add some more. Obviously, you may have more or less. In my case, I've just added 10 here so you can see. And next to it, we're going to add all of the different dates. And let's say that we want this for a total of 21 days. We could use the sequence function for that. And we're just going to want zero rows. So we're just going to add a comma there. And for the columns, let's say we want 21. We can close that parenthesis and hit enter. Now you can see that's going to extend to 21 days. Feel free to change that if you want it for a different time period. Just above the number itself, it would be nice to see the actual date, like maybe it's a Monday, Tuesday, etc. And for that, let's try to make this dynamic. So up over here, we're going to call this habits start date. And this is going to be, let's say, the 1st of January of 2025 and hit enter. And so up here, what we're going to do is simply link it equals this figure and hit enter. And for all the following ones, we're just going to equals the previous one and add a plus one and now we can extend this all the way out to the 21 just by dragging it like so if you're getting this sign here is because they're too small so you can't quite see them so you just need to extend them we'll work on that later though that said we want to change it to just having the weekday itself so monday tuesday etc we can do that with Control shift right arrow to select all of the dates and we'll press Control one from here, we want to go for a custom date in this pop-up. And what we want is simply to type the D three times. You can see as a sample, it's telling us Wednesday. So that's okay and hit enter. We've added the count of habit days, the date itself, and maybe we can also add the weeks. So 21 days is going to be three weeks. So this is just week one. And then we'll go over to roughly around here. That's week two. And then week three over to the side around here. Now we have the overall structure. We obviously need to work on the formatting, but first let's add the checkboxes, which we can first select the relevant area. So it's shift down arrow all the way to our last habit, and then shift right arrow all the way to our last date. What we're gonna do is head over to insert and click on checkbox. In case you don't have the checkbox feature available, what you can do is just use X's. So if there's a habit that you've completed, just put an X on it. And if you haven't completed it, just leave it empty. Let me delete that and we'll work on the formatting in here. Right now, the checkboxes are a bit too large. So I'm just going to make them a bit smaller to around size 10. I'm also going to change them to green as it's positive if we complete these steps. And for some of this top part here, let's go ahead and change it up. So I'm just going to select all the area to the end and change the highlight color. Let's say I go for a dark blue for now. Let's go to more colors and I'm going to choose under custom the 073673. That's the dark blue that I typically like. I'm also going to add a white font and bolden this entire area. Let me also center it wherever possible, like so. And for each of these weeks over here, we can just merge and center by pressing this button right here. Same thing with these ones, just go to merge and center. And this final week too. That said, right now we have a bit too much space in these columns. So we can select all of them just by dragging the columns or going shift right all the way to the end there like so. And right click column width. And here we'll go for something like 4.1. You can see they're a lot tighter there. We'll also get rid of the grid lines by going to view and unticking on grid lines like so. And this top part we're also going to format. So I'm going to go to home again, center this. And let me also add the same headers as the bottom part, kind of like so. 
Awesome, that's the overall structure done and step two is to work on the charts. More specifically, we would like to know on a given day how many tasks we've completed out of our total. So for that, we're going to create a chart up top, but first we need to have some additional calculations. And the first one is going to be the tasks completed. And down below, we're going to have the percentage completion. So for task completed, wherever there is a tick, that should give us a one. Second tick is a two and so forth. The formula we'll use for this is a count if. Hit the tab key there and the range is all of these over here. So all of our habits that are available, comma. And the criteria is that when it's true, that means that it has a tick on it. So in quotations, we'll put true. Close the quotations, close the parenthesis and hit enter. We have two that have a tick. I wrote that true there. If we take a look and click on the cell itself, you'll see up top it says true. When I press space to untick on that, you'll see that it says false. So that's how the true false works. In case you're using an X instead, what you would do is change that true here to just put an X kind of like that. I'm gonna hit escape as that's not currently my case. Then for the percentage completion, it should be two out of 10, so 20%. And for that, we can use equals, select the task completed and divide that by the total count of habits. So that's going to be the count A function, basically counts the number of cells. So it's gonna be from this top one right here, all the way to this last one. Close that parenthesis and hit enter. That's 0.2, we can change that to percentage like so. And now we can just drag that all the way to the right. Let me quickly do that. And you can see most of these have zeros because nothing's being ticked. So let me fast forward how I changed some of these check marks. Great, I've added some check marks there and now we can select all of the percentage completion area. So this bottom part right here, head over to insert and what we're gonna choose is a line chart. And more specifically, it's one with markers like this over here. That's the one that we'll put up top so we can delete that title. We can also get rid of these grid lines by deleting them. And now let me stretch this out and add it all the way to the top part. I'll fast forward that. That's looking a bit better. I'm just going to add an extra column here by selecting column C and control shift plus. Let me just stretch that back in. Basically, we want to match the day number one to the chart day number one. So for this area over here, I'm also going to make it a bit larger by right clicking column width and going for 4.6 roughly. So 4.6 there and hit on OK. And I'm going to stretch, stretch the chart accordingly. We can get rid of some areas. So right click and go to format chart area. We don't really want a fill, so no fill. And we also don't want a border, so no border line. For the axis itself, it is a bit strange that it goes up to 120. So we can change that by clicking on axis options. Under axis options, the maximum is just going to be up to one. So that's up to 100%. We also want to change that background color of this part. So I'll click on the format painter and just click down once. You can see there what that looks like. And now we want to change the lines colors. So we can click on the line, right click and format data series. Under the fill here in the bucket, you can see we want a solid line that's going to be in a green color. And we also want a marker that's going to be under marker options a built-in marker that's let's say size six and we want it to be in a solid green color as well. We also don't want any borders, so no borderline. You can see what that looks like right now. And the idea is that as we unpick some of these, you can see how the chart is changing automatically. So it goes from changing the check marks to then changing the task completed down below and then it changes the charts up top. One final detail with the line chart is that it's currently quite spiky. So we can click on the line chart itself and all the way towards the bottom, click on smooth line. You can see that makes it a bit smoother. I personally think that looks quite a bit better. We can then change the axis again to go from roughly around zero to one and hit enter. If you're finding this video useful and you like my teaching style, you can consider checking out our Microsoft Office bundle where we offer four courses on Excel, PowerPoint, Word and Outlook all designed to make you more productive at work. The link for that is in the description below and the course topics include built from scratch Excel financial models, designing PowerPoint stock pitch decks, building business reports in Word and workday simulations in Outlook. 
All our courses use practical exercises in the form of case studies to replicate the type of work you might encounter as a full-time working professional. So if you want to be more productive at work, head over to the link in the description below to check out our Microsoft Office bundle. In step three of this process, we have another tracker. Right now, we're only tracking things on a certain date, but we're not tracking them by habit, which is what we're gonna look at right now. You can see over here that we have all of these trackers by date, so up top. That said, we don't really have them by specific habit. So for daily exercise, how are we doing? How many days have we missed? All of that we'd like to know. And so we're going to create a different tracker right here to the side called something like total completed. For that, it's going to be the count ifs function again. Hit the tab key and the range is all of these dates here, comma, and we only want to count them if they're equals to true in quotations. We'll put that close the quotations, close the parenthesis and hit enter. So it says that we've completed 12 days here out of the 21 that we have available. And we just want to drag this all the way down to the bottom now. But let's be honest, this doesn't look too great right now. And that's because we don't really have a visual. It would be nice to add some kind of tracker to the side so we can add total completed again. What we'll do is simply hide that first one and the function we'll use is equals to R-E-P-T. Hit the tab key there and the text we're going to want in quotations to add a pipe which is this sign right over here. It might be a bit hard to find it on your keyboard. It's usually right next to the shift key. Close the quotations there, comma, and how many times do we want to repeat the sign? We want to repeat it as many times as we have the check marks which we calculated over here. We can close the parenthesis and hit enter. You can see we have 12 of those ticks right now. And now we can double click to drag this down. And you might be thinking this still looks quite ugly and I pretty much agree with you, but that's because we need to change the font to one called Playbill, as you can see right here and hit enter. Now it looks more like a fill color. We can change that to our green that we've been using under the font and choose a dark green like so. You can see it looks a lot better. That said, it's still quite small. So if you want to make this bigger, what you can do is go inside of the formula up here and just multiply that, let's say by four and hit enter. As long as we keep this consistent that they're all multiplied by four, doesn't really make much of a difference. Let's stretch this one out kind of like so. We'll also add the dark borders like we've done for the other ones. So it's dark blue and I'm going to change the font color to a white and bolden it as well. We don't really need to see this part right here. So we're gonna go to right click and click on hide. You can see there that column is hidden, but everything should be working correctly. If I click on a few more here and tick on them, you can see how the completion bar updates to a much higher number. Awesome. So we now have a tracker for specific days as well as for specific habits. And the next step is to create some key performance indicators or KPIs. Just below the habit start date here, it would be nice to see what is our best habit. So what's the one that we're doing most often and maybe also what is our worst habit. So we're just going to paste the same formatting down here like so. I'm just going to call this best habit and then the worst habit down below and hit enter. So for our best habit, we do have, if you recall here that we hit this area, so we can click on these two columns and unhide. You can see we actually have the count of total completion. So the maximum count of here is going to be the highest, so our best habit. So we can use the max function and select all of this area over here. Close up parenthesis and hit enter. Let's change that formatting. Right now it's in date format. But if I change that to a number, you can see that we have 20, which is the highest number of this list. The problem is it's not very useful to see a count of 20. We would rather see the name of that habit. So in this case, it's 20 for daily exercise. That's what we want to see up top. So for that, we're going to have to go to the beginning of the max function and use an X lookup. Hit the tab key there. The lookup value is we're looking for that 20. That's our maximum number. So we'll leave that as is. Comma. Lookup array is where can we find that 20? Well, we can find it within this entire list over here. So I've selected that same area, comma, and then the return array is what do we want as the answer? We want it to show the daily exercise or whatever other habit we have. 
we can close the parenthesis and hit enter. You can see there it's saying daily exercise as our best habit. And the idea is exactly the same with our worst habit. Instead of the max function, we're gonna wanna switch that to the min function. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that down below. Obviously the cells have gone down now, so we need to drag these back up. Same thing over on this side, we need to drag them back up, kind of like that. And finally, we want to also change it to a minimum. So we're gonna go inside of the formula and type the min function instead, hit enter, and it says read 10 plus pages, which is actually this one down here, we only done twice. So that's our lowest or worst habit. We're all done with the KPIs on the left, but on the right, it's looking a bit empty. So I've added a few more options. You can see here we have the percentage completion. So how many of these habits have we completed 100% of in a given day? So here I should say we've completed 100% two days or five days or whatever. And same thing down below. And for this, we can use the equals count if function, hit the tab key, and the range is all of our percentage completion. We can select those with control shift right, comma, and the criteria is that they have to be 100%. We'll put that in quotations, 100%, close the quotations, close the parenthesis, and hit enter. It says that we only have one day at 100%. If I were to take on a few more here, let me just Click on these three, you can see that we now have two days at 100%. For 50%, the idea is exactly the same, but the function is slightly different. So we're taking the count if, selecting the percentage completion, comma, but now the criteria is in quotations again that it's greater than 50%. So if that's the case, we've completed more than 50% of our habits. So that's eight days, that's a lot better. And how many days do we have at zero? That's another count if the range is the same one, but now we want it to be equals to zero. So criteria is going to be in quotations, 0%, close the quotations and hit enter. So zero days at zero. Because this is a bit confusing right now, we only see the day number. We could change the formatting by pressing control one and under custom, instead of just seeing the number. So in this case, we're going to put a number sign for it. And we can put a space and in quotations type days. Close the quotations. You can see under the sample what that looks like. Hit OK. Let me center that too. So it says two days for 100% complete. I can copy that format by double clicking on this format painter to the left. And just clicking on the 8. And also clicking on the 0. Hit escape there to get out of that. You can see the numbers a lot more precisely there. That said, when we get zero days, you can see it actually doesn't show anything. It only starts to show when we have one day. So that's something to keep in mind. Great, we now have all of the information and we're just missing a few more formatting steps. For each of these weeks, we could change the highlight color for them. So for example, this first one, I might choose a dark blue like this one over here. Then the second week, a slightly lighter blue like so. And same thing with this la last one. Let me see what I pick. Maybe I just go for one over here like that. Also, we can hide this area. So right click and hide on that column. Same thing down below. We don't really need this area over here. But if we select these two rows and right click hide, you'll see that our chart is also gone. So we'll press Ctrl Z there to go back. And instead to hide this, we'll do something a bit cheeky by changing the font color to match the background. So if we add a white font like that, you can see the bottom is now disappeared, so that works out fairly well. Finally, you'll see how this line is cut here at the 100 mark. What we need to do is click on the axis, right click, and format axis. What's happening is because we capped it at 100, this part gets kind of cut out. So we could change that to let's say 1.1 as the maximum. You can see that looks slightly better. It's up to you if you want to make that change though. How incredible is that? In just a few minutes, you've managed to make this completely dynamic habit tracker. And if you want to download this finished file, you can head over to a link in the description below where I'll give it to you completely for free. Alongside building new habits, if you want to boost your productivity, check out this video over here for some free productivity tips or take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.